Monday floss tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. I'm recording here in London, Ontario, Canada, and my channel is about cross stitch and knitting and crafting and all that good stuff. So welcome back. I've uh, I've picked a different place. I'm I'm trying a few different places in the in the workshop here to uh, to film, and I when I was editing Friday's video, the sound was really echoey, and it's it's because um, I don't have a, a carpet or a rug in that room, and so there is a carpet in this room, and so I thought let's try out here and see and see how it goes. The light is actually also decent. It is fluorescent lighting, but. Um, I think we can see each other so let's go with it so this is my sewing area and I have some new I have some well this one you've seen so this this little guy down here in the corner is uh, just Nan and I believe the pattern I believe the chart name is called Jasmine um, I had a viewer comment on that a couple of videos ago and I did pin that comment to the top so if you are in love with that piece and you want the absolutely correct name um, a few videos ago it's pinned it's the top comment pinned in the video above that is a piece by Erica Michaels and <laughs> it's funny because nothing here on this wall was stitched by me none of the three pieces there were stitched with, stitched by me but that's okay that's all right it's it's I love it uh, this one above was also um, just as the Just Nan piece, it was a shop model uh, from my friends Kathy and Neil, who used to own my local needle workshop, Thread and I, and, uh, and they gifted me that piece as well. So the saying on it, I think the, I, I know the focus kind of goes in and out depending on where my face is and where, you know, the camera tries to choose what to focus on. So it says that I can stitch and be happy while I am stitching is a great blessing. So that's the that's an Erica Michaels. I have a funny feeling that that one is out of print, but I could be wrong about that. And then this beauty here, this is a Save the Stitches piece that my friend Dawn, uh, one of the knitting, uh, one of the pair of the duo podcasters, uh, codependent knitters, Dawn rescued this from a thrift shop out in Sarnia, Ontario and uh, along with a few other pieces and uh, I, I had she had sent me a few photos uh, when she was in the thrift shop of, of the things that they had there and and I said oh yeah I'll take that I'll take that and there were a few other things and I had I had plans to use this as a panel in a tote bag but I really like it as is and I love that that somebody stitched it somebody spent a lot of time making this and I think it's beautiful so it's uh, it's on my wall yeah so this is uh, my sewing area where I spend <laughs> a big part of my day and uh, yeah it's it's because I've been here a couple weeks now I moved uh, I moved my business out of the home and I've so I've, I've been here a few weeks now and I'm starting to feel it's starting to feel a lot more like my space it's starting to feel a lot more i'm a lot more comfortable here I, you know figuring out where things now have a home and uh and things are things are starting to to gel as it were i guess uh so okay so i have a few giveaways to take care of first uh i try every monday to do a because monday giveaway you can find these giveaways over on the Facebook group that's attached to my channel. It's called Friday Off The Grid, and um, you're welcome to join us over there. And last week, I had two Lizzie Kate charts uh, up for giveaway. The first one was Welcome Tooth Fairy, and the winner of this chart was Cindy Hall. So congratulations, Cindy, I have already left you a comment on your comment, so if you could please email me your address, mailing address to caroline at evertote.com, then I can get that to you. The next one was also a Lizzie Kate snippet, and this one is, ask me about my grandkids. 
What does the other one say again? Grandkids are great. <laughs> Couldn't even remember that in the two seconds I took to show it to you. So really sweet charts. And this one, this one was the comment chose chooser, the comment picker chose Jan Rundle. And I believe Jan is a, a friendly face from Nova Scotia, Canada. So Jan, um, I'm going to need your address again. I know I had it at one point, but I will need it again. So if you could please send me, email me your address, I'll get this in the mail to you. Okay. So those are the, those, those were the two charts for giveaway last week. I have one giveaway for this week, uh, but it is a full kit. Wedding season is approaching. And for some reason, I have a lot of wedding and birth sort of samplers and, and, and charts in my, in my giveaway stash. So it's time to give away a few more of those. Uh, so today, today's is a dimensions kit. It is a full kit and it's called Treasured Words Wedding Record. And that's the design right there. So all of this border is stitched. I, I love brown and teal. Brown and teal, I, I really love that, that color combination. I think that's really pretty. And the lettering in there, the font is, is really quite attractive. I like this one a lot. So this comes with a 14 count Ada and all of the floss needed you can see it it's all sealed up it's a brand new kit um it the floss comes on one of those new you know how dmc didn't used to sort their floss like this in their kits but now they do and i think it's quite uh i think they're quite well done now they come on these little tags and then you can just pull out the thread from the from the card here as you as you need to use it so 14 count white cotton ADA, a needle, and instructions with an alphabet and numbers for personalizing. So if you or someone you know has a wedding coming up or perhaps planning for next year and you would like a chance for me to send this to you, uh, head on over to the Facebook group Friday Off The Grid. I will have a picture of this up um, at some point later today and then you can leave me a comment. What I try to do is I sometimes I forget and the video goes up and then it's a few hours later and I think oh right I haven't put the giveaway up so <laughs> I do my best but sometimes it's a few hours later um, but I try to tag it as an, as an announcement on the group so that the next time you log into the Facebook group it should pop up as uh, one of the first things that you see in the feed of that group. So, okay, so that was the Because Monday giveaway. The other giveaway that I need to, to share with you, I have, um, I have two winners from the funny story, funny crafting story contest um, so far. I still have lots of stories that I haven't shared with you yet. Um, I received lots of really lovely emails um, people telling me, sharing their stories with me that I haven't read yet. And so I, I'm well aware that I haven't read them yet. So I apologize to those of you who have sent me your emails and I haven't read them yet. I've saved them all up in a folder and I will be sharing them. I just need to, uh, I just need to, 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 to get to it. So it's, it is coming, but from the stories that I've read so far, I had the family listen and choose their favorite. Now, the, 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 this favorite they chose a couple of weeks ago. It's just taken me until now to say, okay, are we sure? Is this the one? Then, uh, and they were like, yes, that's the one. And so now I get to announce the winner with you. So the winner that they chose, because I picked, I was only gonna have one winner, but then there was another story that was my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite. Um, so I chose two winners. So the first winner, the winner that the whole family chose was Linda Skews. And Linda told a funny story, a funny crafting story about pine cones. And so because there's only two winners, two crafting stories, I know I've shared them before, but in case you missed those stories and you would like to hear the winning story, I'll read it to you. Okay, so here is Linda's story. 
So the title of her story was Pine Cones Are Great for Outside Bonfires. This story starts off hot and ends up clean. Many years ago, I went through a stage of making pine cone wreaths. During a trip north of Kingston, I gathered these large cones from a white pine tree. They were dripping in sap. Late on a Friday afternoon, I had the brilliant idea to put these cones in the oven to have them opened up and melt the sap to make a glaze over the cones. Pine cones are to be put in a low temperature oven, which I did. Until I became impatient and decided to speed up the process to start dinner. This is the hot part of the story. I turned the oven to 500 degrees broil. What happened next was the beginning of the disaster. My elderly blind dog started crying to be let out. So I left the stove to let him out. However, I didn't go back to the oven. I remembered that I hadn't cleaned the toilet. So I went to clean the toilet. Since the door to the small bathroom is off of a narrow hall, I shut the door and didn't realize that there was a problem until the smoke detectors in the house went off. When I opened the door, the house was filling up with smoke. From the kitchen door, I could see flames shooting out from the sides and the top of my stove. My two small children were in the basement playing. They had decided to put all their winter clothing on. It's typical of kids, right? <laughs> Let's play dress up. It's always at the worst time. Oh. They could hardly move up the stairs with all the layers. I told them to go a few doors down to my friend Karen's house. Karen operated a babysitting business from her home and when my children went banging at her door screaming that their house was on fire, she was running bath water for one of the kids. She told the older kids to watch the younger kids and came running to my house with a vision of me lying unconscious on the floor. As she came running, she remembered her bath water was still running. Luckily, my neighbor came out and went running to Karen's house to turn the water off and watch the kids. By then, I had phoned the fire department and the cones were completely burnt to nothing and there were no longer flames coming from the oven. Just a big pile of ash. The fire department arrived and by then I was standing outside with the crowd of people that had gathered, pretending that I didn't live there. Well, my secret didn't last long when a fireman came out and asked if the lady cooking pine cones for supper was in the crowd. This was before cell phones and I had to phone a dispatcher to pass a message to my husband. I explained that we had had a small fire and the children and I were at Karen's house while all the windows had to stay open to help get rid of the smoke smell. He had a similar story when his wife caught a turkey on fire. He then asks what I was cooking for dinner. The dispatcher put out the message for everyone to hear that my husband's dinner of pine cones had caught fire and the fire department was called, but everyone was safe. Everyone ended their work week with a good laugh. The embarrassment didn't end there. It was in our small local newspaper. <laughs> Karen's brother-in-law played baseball with the volunteer fire department and it was told over a few beers six months later. My son's soccer coach was a firefighter and he had a good laugh when he realized who my husband's wife was. Apparently the firemen had a good laugh over the situation. This is the clean part. We had been looking for a new stove and I got my new stove. However, the best thing to happen, I had my house completely cleaned. Carpets, drapes, sofa, walls, and everything in my kitchen cupboards and drawers. Fall cleaning was done in one day from a restoration company and didn't cost anything. I seriously advise against trying this method to get your house cleaned. The dog was not left outside during all this commotion. Karen bundled him up and took him to her place where he was warm and safe. So well, that was our winning funny crafty story and Linda thank you so much for sharing that with us my family we all we all got a big kick out of your story so Linda your prize is that you get to choose something from the shop choose something from Evertote a bag set and I will make it <laughs> and send it to you so if you I have your email address here clearly so what I'm gonna do is in case you don't see this video I'll email you and let you know that you've won. Okay, so I told you I picked another winner. So there was a crafting love story. And I have to say, it was, I just, I loved the story so much. So I have chosen a second winner. So Nanette McDougall, please choose a bag set from Evertote. And I will also make that for you and send out, send it out to you as your prize. Do you guys want to hear Linda's love story? It's really sweet. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? 
This story is about me. Did I say Linda's love story? I meant Nanette's love story. It's Nanette's mother's love story. Here we go. This story is about me, my mother, crafting, and love. To start, my parents moved in with me after my husband had passed away. My dad had Parkinson's and I was the person to help. Let's put it this way, you don't know your parents until they move in with you. Let's, let's jump ahead 15 years and my father passes away. My mother and I have crafted every day together since they moved in. You name it, we have done it. Now the love story begins. Two years have passed and my mother had surgery on her knee. Nothing really major, but she had to walk more. So in the South, it is so hot here, we walk in stores and malls. So today we are at Hobby Lobby walking and shopping. I have a small basket and I needed a cart. So I leave my mother in the sewing area with patterns, books, and a chair to sit in. I go up front to get a cart and come back and my mother is gone. Walker and all. What? I try her cell phone, no answer. I do GPS on her phone and it looks like she's still in the store. I look everywhere, I'm scared. I have my mother paged and I wait. The cashier gets a phone call that my mother is in the back at the manager's office. Okay, she's safe, but why is she back there? It doesn't matter, I can breathe again. I walk back to where they said the manager's office was and there is my mother talking to this very nice looking gentleman. He's about my mother's age and he's there having coffee laughing and he just touched my mother's arm wait what i just stand there with my mouth open as this man is talking and laughing with my mother and her cheeks are red not pink but red i move and they see me the gentleman stands up and he has a cane too i walk over and he introduces himself to me he apologizes for taking my mother away without thinking i would be looking for her the manager comes over and introduces himself that Mr. Jim is his father and he just had knee surgery also and was walking in the store. The next thing I know, we are at Hobby Lobby every day walking and just by chance, Mr. Jim is there. For the next two months, I walked and shopped every day at Hobby Lobby because my mother had a walking date with Mr. Jim. I was never so happy as when Mr. Jim announced that his doctor had released him to drive. <laughs> this is how for the love of crafting and knee surgery that my mother found a boyfriend and I got a discount card. It helps when your mother is dating the manager's dad. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Nanette, thank you. Thank you for sending that to me. And I know I've read these stories before on the channel, so I hope that you enjoyed hearing them again because I just think that's so sweet. I love that. So Nanette, pick a, pick a bag set from the shop and I will make it and send it to you. It might not be tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> it might be a week or two from now, but um, I'd love to send you a little something to say thank you. Okay, so I will probably put out another crafting, funny crafting stories video next week it won't be this week but it might be next week um and i'll have more stories if you sent me a story and you ha and it hasn't appeared yet i also have one from jacob at modern folk embroidery he emailed me last week his funny story so i'll i'll add that in as well i will have an extra video up this week though from dorothy his of his historische stickmuster um our lovely friend dorothy from germany um, she is also one of the co-creators of the Silk Stitching app with her son, uh, Justice, and that app is amazing. If you haven't tried it out, it is, it is for iOS devices, um, but the charts that are in there are, I could, I could stitch from that app happily, quite happily for the next 10 years. There's just so many good things in there. So, really wonderful. App. So Dorothy has a video for us. Um, I haven't watched it yet, so I don't want to say too much about it because I need to edit that video, put it together, but I hope to have it posted here on the channel on Wednesday. So if you've enjoyed Dorothy's videos in the past, she has a wonderful way with historical needlework knowledge. She is, she's, she's a, she's a, an historian by, by, um, past like th that's what she did um and her knowledge is 
is wonderful and she's uh, she's well spoken and her stitching is beautiful and so I really look forward to sharing that with you I look forward to watching it myself that's always the best part is when I get to see it first and edit the video together that Dorothy has sent me so I'm really I'm looking forward to that okay so let me share a few of my whips with you now that I'm probably like 25 minutes in and I haven't shared any of my crafting with you yet but it's all, it's all good. I've been sharing lots of other crafty things. Um, so first up, I'll just quickly show you my sock because I, I managed to find my sock blockers. Now sock blockers, that's what these things are. These wooden, uh, you can, they, they come in different flavors, you know, wood, metal, different sizes, depending on what size socks you're knitting. I've always felt that for socks, they're completely unnecessary. You don't have to block your socks on sock blockers. Though lots of people, after they wash them, they will put them on the, especially the metal ones, for them to dry. But I, I always think, I'm just putting them on my feet anyways. I don't really need to block them. But the blockers make them look nice to show off the socks on video. So that's why I, that's why I like using them. So this is my finished sock. This is a, a yarn by Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. It was from the August 2019 Sock of the Month Club. Uh, you've, you've been seeing these socks for months now. I know, I know. It is the only pair of socks that I'm working on at the moment because I really want to finish them. Last week I had finished, almost finished the heel flap when I recorded last Monday. And this Monday I have finished the heel, completed the heel with the uh, heel turn and I've picked up my my slip I've picked up my stitches and I'm now working on my gusset decreases. Now I have made a fairly large error on the heel flap that I didn't notice until I was picking until I was doing the heel turn. So I was well and truly through the heel and realized that I'd made this error, but I'm not gonna fix it. My heel flap is, I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know how I didn't notice this, but I'm like two stitches shy of, of the correct width for the heel flap. Um, yeah, so my socks are not, the heel flap, this one's gonna be a little bit wider, but I have the same number of stitches so it should still fit. It will fit. It'll fit. It's a sock. It's going to go on my foot. And if anybody's close enough to my foot to notice that I'm, you know, that my heel flap is, is one row shy of where it should be, <laughs> one row shy of a full heel flap, then, you know, no one is going to be looking at my feet that closely and I can jam my foot in it. It'll fit. So I am not ripping it out to fix it. But I am, I did, um, picked up all my stitches I'm going back in the round which reminds me I had a question I cannot remember your name I apologize that I'm not I'm not using your name uh, left me a question about knitting on the small nine inch circular needle um, because I mentioned last week that I I keep the needle at the front of the sock and I use DPNs for the heel flap and then I pick up the stitches with the nine inch circular I neglected to to give an important bit of information there. She's like, how do you do that? Because I, I, you know, I've tried and I can't seem to, okay. So there's, there's two things that I do. And the one answer I had already left a comment for this viewer and mentioned that I have, I will have two nine inch circular needles. And so I will often use the second empty one to pick up the stitches of the heel flap. But, and I, I forgot to say this because, and it, clicked in when I was doing it on this sock. Um, I only do that with a second spare needle if I haven't changed colors for the heel flap. So if I'm only using one kind of yarn, then I will use a second empty nine inch circular to pick up the stitches. If I have a different color, I keep my main color yarn attached and instead of starting instead of picking up stitches on needle one where needle one would be at the beginning of the round i actually start picking up stitches on the other side so what would be if you're using dpns if you can picture dpns in your mind 
at the beginning of needle four. So on the other side, where the decreases would start, that's where I start picking up the stitches because that's where the, the working yarn is from my main color that I've left hanging there while I knit the, the heel flap. The yarn is hanging there. So I just start my, I just start picking up my stitches on the opposite side and I go up there, over, and then pick up stitches on the first side. And then I just do my decreases the same way. So I start my decreases on the opposite side of the side that the pattern would normally have you do them on. I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, feel free to ask me more questions in the in the comment in the drop in the in the comment section below, and I'll and I'll see if I can do a better job. But I th I think that was clear. Anyways, that's how my sock is coming along. Love them. Love love them. <laughs> Okay, so some stitching. Let's get to some stitching. <laughs> no, it's still not finished, though I came really close. I, I was, you know, last yesterday, all day yesterday, I was thinking, okay, when I, when I get to stitching time at night, I am, I am not going to put my needle down until that piece is finished. I got to stitching time, and I was so tired. <laughs> I was so tired. I did nothing. I did nothing, except I went to sleep. So I obviously needed to sleep and that's okay. This will get done when it gets done. This is my Distal Fink Heart by Jacob of Modern Folk Embroidery. Um, I will leave a link to the pattern in the drop down box below. And here's where I'm at. I'm so close. I'm so close to finishing this. I just have a little bit more work in the top of the diamond that snowflake needs to be finished. A little bit more of the light, whoops, the light border here, I like you know, what, 20 stitches maybe there. And then an extra border, a two stitch border all the way around the outside and then it's done. So I would fully, there that's better. I would fully expect that I would have this finished by next week. Surely I can finish this by next week. I love, love, love it. This is a uh, 28 count dirty linen. And I'm using two Leo and Roxy flosses. The, the darker color is called Wisteria and the lighter color is called Iris. And oh, I'm just, I'm so close to being finished. I've been asked by a few people how I plan on uh, fully finishing this, FFOing it. And I'm, I don't know. I was gonna frame it, but I think what I'm gonna do instead, I might, I might turn it into a pillow. I have a couple of, um, I, I have a, I have a, uh, Mary, Mary, Mary sent me a Baltimore Ravens uh, design that she stitched for Nicholas, as well as. Um, Carrie, Carrie F from Australia, she sent me another Baltimore Ravens design and that one I was going to turn into like a book sleeve or something for Nicholas. But the the, the larger one is, uh, it's big enough for a pillow. I still don't have a pillow form for it, but I need to get on that and, and, and make it up into a pillow. And so I thought, well, why don't I do a pillow with this one as well? Because I can, you know, I can, I have some really lovely purples in my stash for fabric. I can, you know, miter the corners with fabric and turn it into a square and then finish it off as a pillow. Because I think the smaller pillow form that I have that I, that was wrong for the Raven's Crest is actually, it would be the perfect size for this to be a pillow. So what do you think? I think that might be a really nice way to finish it. Oh, I love it. I just love it. Because it's on the diagonal, um, I could frame it and then hang it, you know, as a, as a diamond shape, but I don't know. Pillow is speaking to me. So I think maybe we'll go with that. I did a little bit of work on my, um, 
my other modern folk embroidery, the 2021 Stitch Along. I did some work on that last night, uh, but I left it at home, so I can't share it with you today, but I will try to bring it in next week and show you my progress. I'm still not even done January's block. I People who are able to keep up with that Stitch Along, I am so impressed because there's quite a bit of stitching in each month's section. It's such a beautiful pattern. I love that chart so much. Um, but I, again, I'll share that next Monday. So I will have put uh, some video footage that I took this morning before I left the house of a new start that I started a couple weeks ago now, but I haven't shared it with you yet. Um, for those of you who know, um, hang on actually, cause it's right here so I can, I can share it with you um, every chance I get, right? This, I, I, I'm in love with these landmark tapestries and charts designs. And so this, I know, I know, right? I mean, I ugh, love this so much. This is called Savon. Landmark tapestries and charts. It's from the Tapesta Pillow Collection. Now, those of you who are looking for these charts, they are very hard to find. Uh, the only seller that I am currently aware of who is selling them is Claire at www.celtichobbies.com. Claire is on a little bit of a break at the moment, so I apologize that I'm sharing these with you and her shop is closed. I believe they're undergoing a very big move. And so her shop is closed, I think until the very beginning of May. I think Clara may have said May 5th is when she has plans to reopen. So I'll keep an eye on that. And when she's reopened again, I'll let you know in case you were hoping to find these charts as well. Um, so this is Savon and I finished this, oh, like a month ago. And now I'm stitching, I have, I have already stitched five of these for Sarah and I'm stitching the other five for Nicholas. This is the first one for Nicholas that's done. And so I had to start a second one and that was the new start that I popped into the beginning of this video. So it's underway, number two. The second of Nicholas's five charts for his dowry are officially underway. Set up properly. I think I'm in about the same spot I was before, but anyways. Uh, so the next new start, <laughs> yes, that's right. I had another one. I couldn't resist because so I treated myself to a rather special purchase. Um, I have been, I have been wanting to try the Ominic frames for a few years now, ever since, um, ever since I saw Gerald's ginger Gerald stitcher, um, many of you know that, that Gerald and I are really good friends. And, uh, when I went out to the, uh, well, I've been to New Jersey a couple of times now. So a couple of years ago, when I, when I first visited Gerald, I drooled all over his ominic frames. And so I've been, it's been at the back of my mind for a number of years now that I really wanted to order, order a set and try them for myself. And I, I did. So I finally, I finally decided, okay, let's go for it. And so I ordered mine, I am in Canada. Um, I ordered them from a small business out in uh, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, the owner's name is Alicia and the business is called Bugs X Stitch. I will leave a link in the drop down box below. Um, she had them in stock and she shipped them out right away. Uh, now, this was not her fault because she packaged them well, uh, but there was some damage to the box from Canada Post, even though she'd put fragile stickers all over it. Um, the top of the box had somehow gotten, the cardboard had been ripped and fortunately no damage to the frames. There was no damage to anything inside, um, but it was uh, just FYI that what's coming is a long thin box and Anyways, so I bought, I bought an Omni frame. I love it. And you know, I already had a Lowry, so I'm using it with my, my Lowry uh, floor frame. And I had purchased, when I purchased the Lowry a couple of years ago now, when I bought that, I bought the large frame adapter and I never really liked it. I never really liked the large frame adapter. 
but with the Omnic frame you really have to use it because it's it's quite long and it's quite heavy and so in order for it to work with the Lowry um, I know there are a few other systems that you can you can buy to hold the Omnic I think it's called a Monstrick or something Monstrick floor frame but you know I already had the Lowry frame so in order to try it out I thought okay let's just order the Omnic and I'll try it with the Lowry and see how it goes and I really like it. I really, really like it. So I am using the long frame adapter that came, that I bought with the Lowry frame. So that is this extra piece of wood here. So this is actually a Lowry frame adapter, okay? Um, I bought these, I bought my Lowry a couple of years ago from so-and-so in the UK. That was a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure that they still actually sell and ship them. Um, I, I know, I know Alicia at Bugs does the Lowry frames as well, but I'm not sure she has any in stock at the moment. Uh, but the Almanix she does. So I started. Anybody guess what this is? Anybody recognize that border? That is the Peruvian cat stitch along. Let me bring up the pattern for you. I'm stitching this on an 18 count navy Ada uh, with uh, Leo and Roxy. The colorway is called Steel. It's the it's the new dye lot of the Steel colorway. Now let me bring up the actual um, Anna's actual pattern so that I can show it to you and give you her her shop information. If you watch Michelle Bendy, Michelle is the one who started the stitch along. Um, and the hashtag is Peruvian Cat Sal. So it is called the Cat Reflection Sampler. And oh, let's come on, open it up. Here we go. Cat Reflection Sampler, Peruvian Flare Cats Reflection Sampler from, oh, where is Anna's name? Anna Aguayo. Okay, so I can't show you the chart that's the that's the full pattern there isn't it sweet oh it's just so it's such a cool pattern and the the re, I, I the reason I was tempted so badly to start this was because I had lots of people who were uh, choosing Leo and Roxy flosses to stitch it with and I thought I, I just kept seeing so many great versions of it. <laughs> I really want to stitch that now too. So yeah, you know, I, I've done so little of, of the border. And this is going to stay here. Um, and so when I have a coffee break or, or lunch break or whatever, and then I'll just, I'll, and I have a few minutes to put in a few stitches, that's what I'll do. So I fully expect that this is just going to be one of those projects that I have fun with. And yeah, I know an ominic frame is totally overkill for this project. <laughs> and I don't care. I sewed some extra fabric on um, because that's the great thing about the ominic. You can swap out the projects really easily. It's got this really nice rod system. See that? The rod slides into the holder there. And because my fabric was a little too short, to fit well, I just attached some cotton. Um, you can see my seam there. I just attached some cotton to the to the fabric, and then I put the cotton into the the well, and then I I did that. So this was kind of my tester for the for the frame. Um, so whether I keep it on here or not, I probably won't because I you know I could just stick it in a Q snap. Uh, because it would fit in a 11 inch Q snap perfectly but I just wanted to try it out and it was a, a simple piece that I wanted to start right away so hence the the massive ominic frame with the small little project on it I like it okay so that's it for me for regular um, crafty floss tube update I have a very brief a uh, little shop update thing to mention um, if you're still with me. I had a big shop update last week. Brand new Leo and Roxy floss colors. Ten set of ten is up. 
I will be releasing those 10 colors as individual colors for sale on Thursday. So this coming Thursday morning, I'll have all 10 of those new colors. I'm gonna add a new button in the shop, a new, a new um, collection button, where I put every month, it'll have the new items. And then next month, I'll put those new items back into the, um, into the regular list. I'm also gonna have a new little section in the website on the shop. I have decided to bring in a few items extra that are things that are my favorite things to use. So I'm just gonna call it Caroline's favorite things or something like that. These are my favorite things. I, I haven't even decided yet, but I'm gonna have a new little section on the website. I've got four new things that I've brought in that I'm gonna add in. These are things that I use all the time that I love and I thought maybe if you were looking for something that you might like, <laughs> does that make sense? These are things that I use all the time, basically. That's why they're my favorite things. So first of all, I have a thimble. I know, it seems like a funny thing to have, doesn't it? But this, this right here is a leather thimble. And you don't know you need one until you use it and it makes such a huge difference that you think, whatever did I do before I had this? And I use these when I'm stitching projects where the needle really struggles to pull through the fabric. So counted canvas work, for example, is a great, like I would not do counted canvas work anymore without one of these. I have done it and I, I need to remember and learn my lesson to not do it anymore because it really starts to hurt my hand. And because counted canvas is so addictive, you just keep going and going and going and then it's too late. Then, you, then I have to, you know, I can't do it for like a month while my hand rests and, and heals. If I start using the leather thimble right from the beginning, it just gives you that little bit of extra grip on your finger. Now. Lots of people use these differently. Some people use them on their thumb. I prefer to use mine on my middle finger because this is that's where my grip is when I'm gripping the needle. And so my finger goes, actually this part of it is where the curve of the finger is there. So this is actually the inside of the finger. So my hand would go in, my finger would go in like that, if that makes sense. So this long part is on the back of my hand. So this uh, little leather thimble, and after you know the first the first while that you're using them, they're a little bit stiff. But like any uh, leather product, it you know warms and sort of conforms to your finger over time. So I love those. Um, so that's first thing. Second thing that I've brought in are I literally where I've got a bucket of them over there. I use these every day. I use them every day in my sewing and I just think they're the handiest things ever. These are called Wonder Clips. Many of you have seen them before, many of you use them, but if you haven't seen them or haven't used them, these little things are phenomenal. I use them all the time. I now use them in place of save, uh, uh, paper clips as well. You know, anytime I need to clip something together, I'm always grabbing one of these. They are so handy. But if you're looking for, um, you know, if you use a lot of pins in your FFOing, these are super duper handy and I just, they're one of my favorite things. So I have some of these, they are sets of 10. Um, and if you love them, you can find them in larger uh, quantities uh, in, in other places. So I've just brought in, you know, small amounts. Okay, the next thing that I've brought in scissors. These are my favorite, 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 favorite scissors. I've used them for years and years. It is always the name brand of scissor that I tend to gravitate towards because I love, I just love how they cut. I, I think they're excellent quality and they are Ginger scissors. So I've brought in some of the uh, Ginger storks. That's them. There, where are mine? Mine are super old. There's mine. So I've had these 
probably 15 years. I love them. I love them. So I have, I have some of these. I'll have these in the shop. These will be up in the shop on Thursday morning. When I, when I update the shop with the individual floss colors, I'll put this up at the same time. So these are not available today. They'll be available on Thursday. And these are not, you know, things that I can't reorder. So it's not like they're not, if I, if they, if they happen to sell out, it's not like I can't get more. Okay. Last but not least, one of my favorite things. And let me show you mine first because I've been using, I know I mentioned, excuse me, I mentioned Kathy and Neil a lot, Fred and I, my old shop. I inherited this when they closed the shop, the DMC color card. Um, so it is, it was well loved by them and it has been extremely well loved by me. This chart is so handy. It's so handy. Now this one's older, so it doesn't have all the colors, but for me and my purposes, it's still good enough, but I use it all the time. I use it all the time. You know, if I have a color that I'm missing and I need to, I want to find another DMC that's close that I could sub in, or I don't have it and a chart calls for it. Do I have something else in my stash that's close enough to it that I can use? Um, then I can look up the number in the, in the, in the color card and I can see what I have in my stash already. That's really close to it. And it's a pretty cool thing to use. So I've brought in, um, the new one. I think I have, I think I ordered 10. I have 10 of them. So I, I didn't know if anybody would want them. Um, you know, cause I, I don't, I'm certainly not the only place that sells these things, but I thought it might be useful um, to, if you heard from me, what I would use it for and why I think it's a, a pretty great thing to have. Okay, so that's it. Sorry for the shop update on a regular floss tube video. I, I, I did think that I would try not to do that, but this week I'm not sure that I'm gonna have time to put an extra video out at the end of the week. I have, um, so personal update now, at the very end of the video, uh, per, little personal update. Our uh, GP, our family doctor, John and I both, he recently retired back in December. And so we were lucky enough to find a new doctor. Um, and I have, uh, I've had a few appointments with this new doctor. And so this week, <laughs> I'm getting all of those appointments taken care of that you tend to put off that you shouldn't put off because you know you're a grown-up and you need to take care of these things and I've been acting like a child for the last couple of years and have been putting them off because they are not pleasant appointments that women need to have um, but however I need to I need to put on my big girl pants and and just take care of it and get it done so I have an appointment later this afternoon for one of those uh, checkups. And then I have another appointment on Friday for, uh, the other one of those big checkups. And so, uh, hooray, hurrah, it's going to be a wonderful week of medical checkups and appointments. However, these things are important to do, important to take care of and to know, to keep ourselves healthy. So that is what I shall do. All right, so that is it for me today. I, I really am done now, now that I've <laughs> filled you in on the nitty gritty as to why you might not get a shop update video later this week. What are you gonna do? Um, so anyways, I will, uh, I'll see you guys next Monday. But don't forget, I will have a video up from Dorothy, Historische Stickmuster, uh, hopefully on Wednesday, so we can look forward to seeing that. And I will see you next Monday for another regular floss tube. So until then, take care. Happy stitching, everybody.